Pete Calandra here. Today, I'll be taking a look at the Spitfire Audio Originals Epic Brass and Woodwinds. This is essentially a repackaging of the original Legacy Albion Library that was discontinued a while ago. As of now, late December 2019, the library sells for $29 US dollars. It contains three brass ensemble articulations and three woodwind ensemble articulations with three selectable mic signals recorded at Air Studios and all housed in Spitfire Audio's own plug-in interface. The brass covers a four octave range while the winds cover a range of six plus octaves and all of the sections were recorded in octaves. Before we get into the sounds, let's take a look at the player. This big dial controls the amount of reverb you can add to the sounds. In the upper right hand corner, you can change the velocity curve for both the live brass and live woodwinds articulations. I won't demo those curves here, but you can see which one works best for the controller you use. If you've mapped MIDI CC to fit your own setup by right clicking on any control, you can reset them all here. We have three signals, close, room, which is a combination of the decatry, outriggers, and ambient mics, as well as a distorted signal. Over here, you have another control for the reverb and a partial envelope control for release and tightness. Tightness cuts into the start of the sample and the release adds a longer tail after you let go of the keyboard. While I'll make some comments here and there, the rest of the video will be mostly playing the sounds. As I already owned the original Legacy Albion, this was an upgrade for me, so I didn't have to pay for it. Hopefully, this demo will determine if this is a good match for your writing setup. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and if you want to be notified, ring that bell. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. The first sound I'll go through is the Brass Live Patch. This is a utility patch for general playing with dynamics controlled by MIDI velocity. First, we'll listen to it with the room mics. Watch your ears, can you get a little loud for a second? Okay, you can see the range of the velocity dynamics there, and now let's just go to the close mics for a second. The first thing you'll notice about this sound, if you're listening with earbuds or headphones, is that the trumpets are panned to the right and the low brass is panned to the left. This next bit will be a bit louder, watch your ears. Next, let's take a look at the distorted signal. That's the first time I'm playing that sound. Really well done. Moving along, let's go to the sustained brass. As I'm in a different space today, I don't have my nano control set up for dynamics. I do though have an expression pedal set up and I can control MIDI CC1 there. This will allow me to play with two hands and still have some dynamics. Sustained brass, room mics.
The next bit will demonstrate the dynamic range, so watch your ears, it gets loud. More crescendos coming up, watch your ears. If you pay attention to this slider here, you'll be able to follow my dynamic moves. While I generally like this sound, I wish there were some articulations in unison, as having everything in octaves makes your choral and chordal work all sound like it was orchestrated by Robert Schumann. Okay, next, let's take a look at the close mic and how that sounds with this articulation. Let's reactivate the room mic and add some of the built-in reverb and see what that sounds like. Take a listen to the reverb tail after I release a note and see what you think of that.
This is with the reverb off. No built-in reverb. Let's add this back in half, and let's try turning the release of the note down a bit. See what we get. Let's turn the reverb up. Okay, let's turn these down and turn up the distorted signal and hear how that works with this articulation. I think I'd really enjoy playing this if the pitch bend wheel were set up to work. Let me take a look at this. I see. This is the octave of the keyboard that's shown. Moving along to the next articulation, We'll go to brass short. Again, dynamics here will be controlled with my velocity on the keyboard. And we're starting off with just the room mic. You can change the attack by playing around with the tightness control. I think I'd like a drier sound for this, so let me turn down the room a bit and add some of the close mic to this sound. You can see that by playing around with the tightness, you can add a little percussiveness to the attack. Moving along, let's go to the distorted signal and see what that sounds like. There's a nice snappy attack on that. And that's a good representation of the brass part of this library. Let's move right along and check out some of our woodwinds, starting off with Woodwinds Live. 
similar to the brass in that dynamics are controlled by velocity. Okay, let me improvise a little something using the sound, and we'll start with just the room mics. Okay, while I like that sound, it seems that the release is rather abrupt and you don't get much of the reverb tail. Let me turn up the built-in reverb and play that again. Let's add a little bit more of the built-in reverb. Let me turn down the room mic and we'll listen to the close miking of this. One thing I really enjoy about the woodwind patches is the extended range. I'll explore that in more detail with the long and short articulations. On this patch, there seems to be an unnatural cutoff of the release sample. I do like the sound, and I think by adding reverb, you could probably cover that up a little bit. Let's just continue playing. To demonstrate the point about adding reverb, let's actually do it with the built-in reverb. Okay, next up, we'll take a listen to the distorted signal. Moving right along, let's go to the wind's long articulation. Let's get the room mics set up here. So we have the same starting point as the last one. And again, with this patch, I've got the mod wheel mapped to an expression pedal. So I'll be able to control dynamics with my feet and play passages with two hands. Let's get started.
transposing the keyboard down to access the lower octave. Now transposing it up to access the upper octaves. Yeah, that sound goes up into the stratosphere. Now let's take a listen to the close microphones and see what that sounds like. The first thing I notice about this is it seems to be a very mono signal. Let me get the keyboard back to the regular transposition. Let's try blending some of these mics together. So we'll bring down the close a little bit. We'll bring up the room mic and add some of the built-in reverb to the sound and see what we get. This is a really beautiful sound and I think with all this ambience in it I'll enjoy playing it even more. So I'm going to start playing stuff with a higher dynamic, it's going to be louder, so watch your ears.
now let's take a listen to the distorted signal. I like that sound. What I think I'd like to experiment around with, though, is inserting Fab Filter Pro R reverb and having a very large hall and making this very wet. I think that'd be a really interesting timbre. Let's try that. Moving along, we'll go to the short articulations of the woodwinds. These are velocity controlled, and again, we'll start out with the room sound. Okay, you can tell by the length of that little improvisation that I like that sound. Let's move along to the close mic. Uh, let's play in a different key. Cute. Let's now try blending some of these mic signals together. So we'll have a little bit of the short so we have some nice clarity and some of the room so that we have nice ambience from Air Lindhurst. Thank you. 
Now let's play around with some of the distorted signal. And adjust the tightness for a more articulate attack. Let's go back. We'll have some of the room, some of the close, and the hall. Some final thoughts. I think that Spitfire Audio has learned quite a bit since they released this library. Having the brass in octaves is a bit of an issue for me as it kind of limits the harmonic content as there's so much doubling going on, it can make things very muddy. That being said, at the very quietest dynamics, it's a beautiful sound. I do think that the woodwinds on here are really beautiful. And while there is a bit of an issue with some of the short release samples on the close mics, when you blend the room and close and add some of the built-in reverb, you don't hear that at all. What you get is a beautifully recorded and very expressive ensemble woodwind patch. Who's this good for? This is good for a student on a budget, for somebody who's got a CPU and RAM challenged computer, and for beginners, or somebody who just wants to get the Spitfire sound into their palette of timbres. And while there's not a lot of variation on the articulations, there's no legato, you can still create quite a lot of music with these sounds. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. If you want more content, please subscribe. And if you want to be notified, ring that bell. I'll play you out with a bit of an extended improvisation using the short articulations. I've been Pete Calandra. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.
Thank you. 